I'm just going to quickly go through something that I've been using called DNA Plotter. I've been using DNA Plotter to produce circular genome images, but I was also using it more recently as well, or experimenting with it to produce annotations of shorter sequences. I'll just bring up where you can find DNA Plotter. If you type in Artemis Genome, into your web browser and then identify Artemis, the Artemis software. Once you have that page, if you scroll down, you'll see software availability and there's an option for selecting either Mac or Windows in there. So in terms of the gene prediction, you type into your browser gene mark Gene mark gene prediction. Now I've got a short sequence and I'm going to use something called gene mark HMM to project some genes within this short piece of sequenced DNA. I saved my file on the desktop. If I open it up, you can see what it looks like. I've labeled it as being called cluster. And it just looks like that. So it's purely a nucleotide sequence. So in Genmark, if you select that file, and you know where it's come from, hopefully. So in this case, it's from Nyseria. So I'm going to select Nyseria here. I'm then going to select gene nucleotide sequence here and I'm going to press start. Now a couple of options here, you can either have nucleotide sequence for the genes or their coordinates. So I'm going to just select the coordinates for now. Now I can take this bit of information here and I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into the bottom of this file because I want those coordinates in a minute. Once you've downloaded Artemis, you can unpack the file wherever you want it, the folder. Open up the folder and inside you'll see something called DNA Plotter, which is an executable file. So if you open that up, it will say, do you want to read in a sequence file or a template file? I'm going to choose a sequence file. Then select your cluster. You can see it's just a, a blank image at the moment, but it's circular. So if you go Options, Features, now this is where you need the gene coordinate. So let's have a look. So your first gene is between 149 and 2719. So if you do here, 149, and the stop is 2719. Select a color for that. I'm going to use dark green here. Press OK. You can see the gene being highlighted on this image. The next one uh, between these coordinates 2716 and 3342. Select another color for that gene. I'll do this one gray. Again, this is your third gene, 3349, 5178. Again, select another color. And finally, 5205. Five nine four
So you can change the color of this one as well. You should get something that looks like this. Now another thing you can do is adjust the line width of your jeans. So I'm going to double these and make them 20 rather than 10. Just to make them big and bold. And you can put either arrow heads or tails on depending on which way the jeans are going. So you should get something that looks like this. So you can close that part now. This isn't a circular piece of DNA, so if I go into, okay, open up DNA wizard, you want to select linear here, it's actually linear. Now it'll look something like this, okay, and it's quite hard to see anything because it's been split into multiple lines on, on there, you can see. But if you go into options, right click on linear plot, basis per line, if you type in 7000 or whatever length you think your sequence is, press OK. You can see that's now condensed it onto one line. Additionally, right click, line height. If you put that as around about 50, you can see it, it just neatens it up a bit more. Okay, there's other ways to actually make this look neater and you can add labels in as well. But I thought it was another little option that you could use in DNA plot other than using it for annotating circular genomes. So I hope that's helped.